Hello everybody, this video goes along with the email I just sent and it'll explain this graph to you, this, this uh, spreadsheet better for you. So first of all, we all know that the comprehensive program reviews are done every three years and per Linda Amidon's cycle sheet that she has, yours are due, your CPRs, your comprehensive program reviews are due this fall, which I think they have to be done by November 15th. So what I've done is I went through and these are all of the departments and the people with whom uh, have to complete these. So I'm going to go through this. It'll make more sense. So for here, I looked it up. I put your alignment maps together and I emailed everybody those. So on the alignment map, I'm going to pull one up here. Here's the alignment map for English. And this is for to align the SLOs, the PLOs, and the ILOs. If you notice, there's an introduce, an expand, and an advanced. So here's when you want to, we don't do PLOs here for the uh, English 1 and English 2, the uh, developmental courses, because they're not required for the program. But if you come down to the ones which are required down here, you'll notice that we put an I when we introduce to hit certain PLOs, when we expand it, and the advanced which is lower down for the higher level courses so you'll do this and then we put an X by the ILOs that they hit the ILO should be easy for you to put on the grid because they're also with the SLOs uh, they're listed and then in parentheses the SLOs are put there as well on the SLO chart so this is what the alignment map looks like and each one is different and what I did is I went through and I looked at everyone's program and I put those courses in there. Now I want to show you a different grid. Since English is all English courses, some of you have different courses from outside your department that you have to look at. So here's the alignment map for correctional science. So again, I put the PLOs here, introduce, expand, advanced. So these courses are required, so I put them in here. And then here, uh, CIS 150 is not required. So I put, it's not a requirement, but you, might, you may want to align it anyway. So if the, a lot of the students are taking it, maybe you just want to align it. And if you use it for part of the program review, even though it's not required, you know, align it anyway. And then here, there are nine credits to choose from, from this list. So Ed or whoever in his department does this can look and use their discretion on which courses they're going to align. I would align them all that way in the future you have it done and then we can just keep recycling the map and make changes to it as we go for the next cycle. So I went through this carefully. So again, these courses up here are required, so should be mapped. 150 is not a requirement per the catalog. And then here the students have a choice from nine credits out of these. I think there's a list of nine. So let's go on to one more uh, map. So this map, this alignment mapping is for computer science. What I want to show you is, <clears throat> here are all the required courses, but then when you come down here, uh, per the catalog, there are, the students uh, have a choice of general physics 2 and general biology. So this is, uh, if they take the biology course, if they need the information for biology, since it's not in the math department area, let me know, I'll get it for you, and then you can map it here. How does general biology hit the program learning outcomes for you, not for biology, but for this program, the computer science. This is really good too because this shows that we're talking within the departments and that's really good for uh, accreditation. All right, let's move on. So I have sent everyone those maps. You should have those. I'll put a check mark here or an X once they are completed. They need to be completed when you fill out the PLO form because it'll be attached to the bottom. And these should be done before November 15th because they need to go along with the comprehensive program review. In the past, we weren't really strong on this, but it's important that the PLO form in the alignment map, uh, Jose and I are, are we're thinking about attaching it right to the end of your uh, comprehensive program review because we have to show that everything is being linked for accreditation purposes. So uh, we'll talk about more on that later, but right now they need to be completed by November 15th. So alignment map you have, once it's filled out, send it to me, I'll hold it. I'll give you an X here for it. If you need help with it, let me know. The PLO form, where is that going to be? Let me show you. 
So when you're ready to fill out the PLL form, just come to faculty and staff over here to student learning outcomes. Everything is done by division. We've broken it into five. So just come to here where it says SLO, PLO by division. I'm just going to click on uh, arts and sciences. Come down here. The PLO assessment form is here. If you want to see a sample of what it looks like, it go, it's here. So let me click on the form first. So you'll, you'll just fill out all of this. And if you need help, let me know. I have uh, questions over here that once you toggle over the box, instructions will jump up if you need those. So for the results and the reflections, what Michael and I are doing in the English department is during a department meeting, we pull up the PLO results, which we used a higher level literature course and a higher level writing course because our PLOs are literature and writing. So to cover both for the program learning outcomes, we use two classes to observe, two courses. So then what we'll do is we put the information up on the overhead, up on the screen, and we talked about it. And uh, as a group, as a department, we will make the recommendations and the results and the reflections. So we're going to do that at the next department chair meeting, and then Michael and I will finish up typing this up. And then what you do is you can attach the alignment map here, which would be complete, and then submit, and you will get a copy of it. All right, and what will it look like? I've showed people this before, so a sample. This is one that, oh, excuse me, I'm trying to open it here. This is one that Austin and I put together. He is very thorough, yours doesn't need to be this thorough, but that form, once you're finished, will look like this. The evaluation process. Results and reflection, recommendation and planning. These two here are the major points we need for the comprehensive program review. So please be very thorough on these. And the reason they have to be thorough is if you're asking for money or you're asking for something in your department, this is where this comes in. This is the evidence we're showing based on the SLOs and the PLOs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We need th this stuff. All right, so that's that. And again, this should be done before November 15th because that's when you are, your uh, comprehensive program review is due. The next part here is the planning cycle entered. Since you are doing yours for the fall of 19, your comprehensive program review, you will start fresh for fall of 22, till fall of 22. So that gives you three years to get all of your SLs assessed. So where do you do this? Let me show you. So come back here, oh, maybe I won't go back here to the division, that's fine, I could have stayed, but that's okay. Come here, arts and letters, I could have just stayed. Anyway, and then come here where it says schedule planned completed SLO forms. All of your SLOs are listed here by division. So this is the English department, I'm going to slide over here. If you notice, it says the cycle plan. If you drop down the menu, you just click on when you're going to have your department assess the SLOs. So up till fall of 22, since that's when you're next. Okay, this isn't carved in stone. So if you put fall of uh, 21 and you don't do it fall of 21, just change that to update it. And then once these are filled out, the SLOs, I'll come over here. Now make sure that the uh, closing of the loop is completed before you have your staff your uh, department enter the SLO forms on the SLO website. So what that means is, let's say uh, we're in the spring semester. So if your department's going to measure SLOs in the spring semester, good, collect all of the information for the spring. When we come back in the fall, maybe at your first department meeting or your second department meeting, discuss that. Or if you have six or three department uh, faculty who did a certain SLO, they can discuss it, email each other, but we have to close the loop. They have to discuss the outcomes, what improvements can be made. And they should all be done in the following semester by the eighth week, because that will give you two department meetings in order to discuss these. So again, uh, SLO, if it's collected in the fall, collect it, collect it, keep it. In the spring, analyze it 
and enter it into the SLO form, the closing of the loop form by the eighth week of the following semester. And then I'll put an X here to make sure that it's completed. And this is very important because accreditation wants proof. Oh, yes, it was collected. X, 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 X. Over here, this is how I was doing it. I'm just going to keep these completed, completed, completed uh, as a history, just as a record that we have it. But right now we're going to focus on the first two columns. So please get this done as soon as you can. This way your faculty will know when you're collecting a certain SLO, what month or excuse me, what semester you're going to do it. So this uh, planning cycle, since you guys have for fall of 22, please get this done by the end of this semester so I can uh, make sure that it's completed. I'm going to put a column here, something I want to make sure it's completed. I got to stay on uh, focus here. And then the PLSO, PLO assessment tool. Let me show you where I'd like you to enter that. So if you come back to the planned, we're going to scroll down. So the SLOs are first, and then the PLOs follow each department. I'm getting to it. Here's the program, and then in the yellow, it'll say PLO assessment tool to be used. And then for the nursing program, they use the state licensure. But in this box, let me scroll or slide over here a little bit. Put the assessment tool here. This way, if one of the faculty members from your department looks, they know what the PL assessment tool is. And it's just a way of being organized. Okay. And then let's go here. Oops, excuse me. I'm going to go back to the main spreadsheet. So once that is finished, I will put an X. The PLO assessment tool is entered. X, 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 X. I actually think I'm going to also put planning cycle entered as well. X, 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 X. We need to be well organized for accreditation. So if you have any questions, let me know. I also put some information here. It's basically everything I just talked about below each column. So good luck. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Bye.